Welcome to Back on Your Bullshit. I am your host, Kate Morris. I'm a qualified nutritionist and personal trainer who fell in love with helping women build strong, healthy, and confident bodies. This podcast talks all things health, fitness, mindset, and business, helping you get back on your bullshit, take control, and build your dream life. Alrighty, guys, welcome back to the Back on Your Bullshit podcast. I am excited today. I say that with every single podcast, but I have my beautiful friend Roger here. We have literally drowned social media about this podcast in the last like week or so, but I'm really, really excited. So I was about to explain what you do, Roger, but I think it's rude. I think you need to do that yourself. So go on and introduce yourself. First of all, good morning. And to anybody that's listening, thank you so much for listening into this podcast. I've been a fan of this podcast since Kate started it purely because it's just no bullshit and it's literally as it should be. And I love it. Um, I'm really humbled to be invited into this environment. So um, I'm a shift work coach and I do one-to-one shift work um, coaching for um, majority of my clients are females. Now, Yes. I've done 37 and a half years of 24 seven frontline shift work in law enforcement here in Victoria. Um, I have a partner who was a shift worker. I have a daughter who's a shift worker. My son-in-law's a shift worker. My son is a shift worker as well. You are surrounded by shift workers. (laughs) I have it covered everywhere at the moment. Um, And I've learned a lot about shift work through, I coach my daughter and my son-in-law and I've helped my son and, you know, we've, there's a lot to be learnt about shift work. So what I did was I went through my own transformation about oh, five years ago with Mark Carroll, I uh, was yep. the pin-up boy for the Gen Pop, um, which is still there on his Instagram, which is very humbling, <laughs> also very embarrassing, but anyway. Um, and it gave me a passion for nutrition, Kate. And what I did yep. was I, I wanted to learn everything that I could, evidence-based around nutrition, And as I looked across the floor and as I started talking to shift workers, I started to realize that there is no help for shift workers at all. There is nothing. No one has any guidance. And what the biggest problem that we have is, I think, is we have nutritionists that understand nutrition and know everything. We've got shift workers that do shift worker, shift work, but we don't actually have a nutritionist that is currently still doing shift work. And hello, I'm it. I'm still- And that's you. That's me. (laughs) And we have 2 million shift workers in Australia alone. Shit. And when you look at the United States, there's 22% of the population of the United States are shift workers now as well. Now, wow. when we say shift workers, we're not talking just night shift, obviously. We're talking, um, yeah. we're talking, you know, people that work afternoon shift, they do early starts. Anything that's outside the normal nine to five is generally deemed shift work. Yeah, that, that means there's about 170 million shift workers in the US alone. Wow, so we have a big market, so we can talk to a lot of people and just give them simple strategies. And because all of your clients are ladies, yeah, let's do this because we're doing it for the women today. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, and exactly I, yeah. like what you just said about how you've got nutritionists and then you've got shift workers. Like I'm a qualified nutritionist. I think that I'm relatively smart in the nutrition field, but when it comes to my girls with shift work, I have barely any idea. I don't know how to go about it. And that's when I find myself sending all of my girls your posts on Instagram about shift work and how meal timing and carb cycling, but we'll dive deeper into all of that anyways. Yes. But it's very interesting. It's a different world to me completely. So I'm going to be learning as much as everyone listening along at home, which is really exciting. Fantastic. And what I have done now, Katie, since I've started coaching and I've been coaching clients, I've lent towards the female and the female health side because I want to learn as much as I can about women's health. Um, yes. I have learned so much around the female cycle um, and the correlation between that and uh, body image issues. And this also brings about disordered eating, as you know as well. Yes. So all these three are all very, very intertwined. So what we've done is I've gone back to like grassroots, helping people with their body image, helping them with their disordered eating because night shifters are horrendously, you know, the disordered eating around shift work is really bad. Uh, Yeah. There's a reason for that. There's a massive reason for that. So, um, yeah, so let's cover some of those things 
in particular. Um, I'm excited. Let's get into it. It's going to be a juicy episode. I can't wait. Uh, fantastic. And thank you again. So the first thing that I'd really like to talk to you about just to explain is, and all your ladies will be sitting here nodding, why is it females struggle so much with night shift or shift work in particular over males? Because mm. they look around the room and they see all their male counterparts and they're, they're fine. They don't have problems with, you know, obviously um, let's talk about like paramedics or police or fire yeah. or, or nurses that are having to, particularly at the moment, Kate, with, you know, having to wear PPE gear, yeah. all of that protective gear and things like that. So they're having to wear all of that. And what they're doing is they don't hydrate properly. And what happens is this causes massive problems for their digestive tract. Now, yes. women are really different. Not only women are not little men. You've heard James Smith talk about this, and we've heard a lot of people talk about this. That yes. Women are not little men. You don't just say, okay, they're just different. They're just little women. The, the female digestive tract is completely different to the male digestive tract, for a start. Um, a female stomach is less acidic, and it also... It has its gastric emptying is slower than a male. Than males, so, yeah. So there's a problem to start off with, all right? Um, then we empty into a, uh, a digestive tract, which is actually longer than a male's digestive tract as well. Now, we then go from there into a colon that is also longer than a male's. It also empties slower than a male's mm. as well. Now, let's have a think about it. Where's the colon? The colon is right down there sitting in that pelvic region. And where are the female reproductive organs? Same place. Exactly the same place. Male's reproductive organs, external. Female reproductive organs, internal. So we've got a full colon that's agitated, that's rubbing up against a, a severely agitated um, female reproductive system, particularly in the luteal phase of the cycle, yeah. or the last phase of the cycle, it's a recipe for disaster. And if you look at that, and this is why females have so many problems around that, particularly if you are sedentary. Yes. And a lot of shift workers are sedentary, um, you know, particularly like in emergency services or yeah. um, or people that are, you know, let's, we have, what we think about, when we think of shift workers, we always think about police, fire, ambulance, you know, nurses, doctors, yeah. and we think about that, but we forget about call centres, we forget about, um, you know, um, baggage handlers and people that are sitting there checking your bags in at airports. And we think yep. about taxi drivers and um, um, Uber drivers and, and all of those sort of people as well. And uh, people working everywhere in private industry now. So it is everywhere. So what mm. we want to do is we need to keep moving and we need to keep that system stretched out a bit more. And we need to get that water in so, and yes. see what keeps our system Love. It's funny that you mention water because I always find with my clients, spe like specifically the ones that work night shift, obviously, yep. never drink any water. Yep. So if you're my client listening to this and you work night shift, drink your fucking water. It's so important. The essence of life, Kate. You know, the water yeah. is so important. And is there a measure of water? No, there is not a measure of water. This is where there's not eight glasses. <clears throat> it's not three litres. It's not... It's not two litres or this is eight cups or however it goes. It is yep. literally, if your urine is clear, you are hydrated. End of yep. story. You don't need to have any more water in your system other than getting your urine to clear. Now, yep. we understand that with our shift workers, particularly our police women or our paramedics wearing our gear, they've got so much equipment on and it's hard for them to go to the toilet. No yep. doubt about it. And I get They it. avoid it. They do. They yeah. avoid the water so they don't have to go and, you know, particularly in hospitals where you've got to strip off, you've got to redo all your PPE gear, wash your hands and all the rest. We yeah. get that. We totally understand all of that. But you know what? Outside of your shift, you can still be fully hydrating up and getting everything moving and walking as well to keep your system moving. Um, yeah. This is super important. Water movement will help females to keep that digestive tract moving it's so important. But accept the fact that I have a longer digestive tract. I need to keep this colon empty. I need to be able to go to the toilet. I need to keep this water flowing through my system. So do mm -hmm. that. Don't fight it and then turn around and say, oh, I'm hormonal. Um, yes. Because it's actually your colon packed up full that's rubbing up against your 
you know, your uh, yeah. reproductive organs, it's causing all sorts of problems down there. You know, See, um, that's an interesting thing and something that I've just learned because I didn't even, wouldn't even consider that or think about that as a thing that would affect digestion. No, and it does. And this is why, once again, the water is just so important for our shift workers, you know? Yes. Now, um, and water's important for everybody all the time, but, you know, more so shift workers need more water and, and they need to do, put more water through their system as a matter of course, because what's one of the biggest indicators of fatigue? Hydration, dehydration. Yeah. Yep. Are you fatigued? I feel so tired all the time. How's your hydration? Shit. Uh, uh, shit. Well, there you go. This is the reason, this could very well be a symptom of dehydration, that you are fatigued. And my shift workers, my clients, when we start to work on things like our, um, our water, and our movement, yes, we start to get more energy and we start to feel better. And also the, the vitamin D, of course, Kate. Yeah. We all know about the vitamin D and how important getting that vitamin D is on a daily basis. But and specifically for shift workers, because correct. if you're working overnight and then sleeping throughout the day and waking up when the sun's starting to go down, you're not going to get that important vitamin D. So quickly before we jump into vitamin D, I have a question about water. Yes, so correct. if you're a shift worker, would you recommend drinking water, like making sure you're hydrated prior to your shift if you know that you're not going to be able to prioritize that during your night shift? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And okay. here's one for you as well. Here's my one of my tips that I've given to shift workers or anyone that's prepared to listen to me. Hydrolyte. Yes. Emails as well. Now, what I do when I'm on night shift, and we'll go into the cycle of night shift, but when I'm on night shift, before I go in for my shift, and I'm lucky, I'm male and I don't have to wear all the equipment because of what I do, right? So, yeah, um, because of my actual role. But what I do find is when I get up before I go into work, I have five or 600 mil of water with two hydrolyte in it. Perfect. Okay. And I drink that so that I'm getting, and every one You're of my- You're pre-prepared. Yep. And what it does- yep is it charges you up. It's almost like a caffeine fix and it charges you right yes. up. Just, you know yourself, electrolytes, hydrolyte is electrolytes. It yep. charges your system. It starts to transport all those nutrients around your system, just like the water is as well. But it literally- You're getting a head start, up. essentially. Yep. Yeah. Hold on. And you know you've put at least 500 mil of water in before you go off to work. Yep. You might have to go to the toilet within an hour of getting to work. But you know what? It gets your system moving. It's keeping you moving. It's keeping everything going. Pre-planning. Well. Yeah. And that's Getting organized. I love it. Yeah. So the hydrolyte is a massive bonus, massive bonus. Um, it's a, it's just a little tip that I give to my ship mm. leaders, um, the ones that I'm coaching. Um, and they now all swear by it. They yeah. absolutely swear by it to the stage where they'll even do it during the shift. Because you've got to remember, Kate, good. if you're drinking a lot of water, you're actually flushing all that sodium out of your system at the same yep. time. So you need to keep that sodium back in. The other hint I would give is also um, grating up a bit of pink salt, putting some pink salt in your water as well. Yeah. I say pink salt because if you put iodized salt in, which is better anyway, but if you put iodized salt, it can taste like drinking seawater. Yeah, it's, not nice. <laughs> it's a bit of pink salt. It's almost flavorless, but it's still providing you with the sodium in your water, which is really, really good. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A good little tip. Yep. So the other thing I want to kind of move into now is I really, so, and this is a new concept to me as well. Yes. So I'm going to be learning equally as much, and I'm very excited for everybody listening at home, is the fasting overnight for night shift. Mm, yeah. Now, research, the still, research is still very, very new for shift yeah. workers. And there's nothing that says this is what you must do at this point in time. But what we do do is we learn from the research and what research tells us that we should not do, right? Yeah. And if there's one thing that we should not do is we should not be consuming any food between midnight and 6 a.m., all right? See, this is a whole new concept to me. So uh, essentially, when my clients come to me with night shift, I will send them your posts. Yes. But if they're like, how would I structure my meal? I would logically thinking i mean i've never worked night shift in my life i should say that as well yes. um i would logically think that you would structure it like you're eating during the day but you're at night so you'd have maybe like your breakfast before you head off to night shift then you'd have like your dinner you might have a snack and then like when you get home or you sorry you'd have your lunch a snack and then when you get home you'd have your dinner as like 
your breakfast before you go to sleep. Mm. That's how I would have structured it, yeah. but apparently not. Okay. No. no, no, absolutely not. And this is a trap that people fall into, Kate. With right. The shift work. We need to get research shows that we need to get approximately 55 to 60% of our calories in during our biological day. Now the biological day is what would normally be, let's just go light dark. All right. So when yeah, it's so like our waking hours, yeah. Yes. When it's light, when it's dark. So what yep. we need to do is get between 55 and 60% of our calories in during the biological day. So how do we do that while we're shift working and we're asleep? Now, that makes it very difficult. So what yes. if we just give our body a bit of a rest and we just don't worry about it? Are we? I'm sure that majority of your clients are fat loss clients. Yes, yeah. Right, majority. And, and mine are too. Yeah. Uh, and they say, oh, I can't get my calories in. I can't get my macros. I can't get my macros. And I say, hey. Our body is stressed to the max because we're on night shift. Let's just give it a bit of a break. Let's just put yep. a little bit of food in. Now, let's go to, and it's hard because some shift workers are, um, let's say, uh, how can I put it? Like, you know, if, if we look at the police doing their regular seven nights a night shift, so they can get into nice routine of waking mm. sleep. Nurses, God bless the nurses. They are absolutely bent over and brutalized. And I've, mm. in fact, I've modeled my business on female a, a, a female, a, a nurse, a female nurse that's married with two children, that husband isn't a shift worker. So that's what I've worked around my my avatar for my business because they are brutalized. And if you can help them, you can help anybody. Yeah. Um, so what we do is when we wake up, that's when you would take yourself for your walk. Get up, get out. Because what we want to do is we want to get out in the light and we want to suppress that melatonin. That vitamin D. Wake up and get that vitamin D at the same time. Right? Yeah. So even if we're supplementing vitamin D by getting out into the sun, we are actually synthesizing the vitamin D on our skin as well because our body is so clever. If we don't need any vitamin D, our body won't synthesize it at all. So it doesn't matter. And we go for a walk to suppress the melatonin. Now, melatonin is what brings on our sleep. You will yep. find if you get up, get outside and get out in that light, even if it's overcast, that blue light is still bright enough to suppress our melatonin so that we go for a walk and we wake up. And we and feel more body, awake. Yes, and our body starts to wake up. Once we've been yes. for a walk, what do we feel like doing? Having something to eat. So then we're sort of talking around 6, 7 o'clock. That's yep. the time when you would have your, your, you know, maybe have your eggs, have, your, have your, what you would have like a breakfast, you know. Yeah. light, snacky, and have breakfast. Whatever – your, your clients, you know, if they're married and they've got a husband and children, whatever they're cooking for dinner, put that aside and have that when you get to work at around about 10 to 11 o'clock. We, okay. we want a dinner that is high in protein, yep. high in fat, and some carbohydrate as well to keep us going. Because the carbohydrate's what brings our energy, as you know. That's the energy, it's, yep. The protein brings us our satiety. And, and is very important for our, you know, hair, skin, nails, and our, all of our functions. And the fat also is really good for our sex hormones as well. Really important for our estrogen, yeah. our progesterone. And for females, it suppresses the testosterone. For males, it boosts the testosterone. You know, it's fat, um, dietary fat is just so important. But it's also fairly highly, you know, keeps us um, satiated, which means yeah. keeps us feeling fuller longer. So if you have a really good meal, now what I do, Kate, at 11 o'clock at night, between about 11 and 11.30 at night, that's when I have my um, my chicken thighs with my big salad, my big-ass salad, you know, the Georgia yep. salad, big-ass salad. And <laughs> I load up because I'm getting all of the colours and I'm getting all of the, the, the chicken in, which is filling me right up with the um, – keeping me going. And that keeps me going right through the night. Yeah, and, okay. And, uh, now, a lot of people for the fast – struggle to start off with you can't possibly expect to go from eating overnight all the time to never eating so what i suggest people do is take themselves some yo pro yogurts or uh, um, some hummus with some veggie sticks you know like some yeah. carrot or celery sticks or something like that the one thing we have to avoid carbohydrate we have to avoid carbohydrate overnight it's so okay important. our body 
is desperate for energy and it will trick you into thinking, oh, I need the chocolate, oh, I need the chips, oh, I need the lollies, I need the biscuits, I want all of that stuff. And nurses, all of that stuff that's at the nurse's station that all the other nurses are bringing in, they're doing that because that's what they think you need, but you don't want any of that at all. That's what's right. causing grief. Right. So avoid all of the treats in the office or in the wards. Avoid them all. <laughs> yeah, and, and with the patients giving you the chocolates, don't leave them at work. Ditch them. Take them out of sight so they're not there. Because what it does, Kate, is it spikes our energy. And as you know, we have our carbohydrate. We get spiked up. We feel really good. Yeah. We, we, we crash. And then we repeat and crash and we repeat and crash. And what actually happens to our body overnight is we are insulin resistant. So that fat, that glucose is floating around our system all night, running around. And because it's got nowhere to go, because it's not going into the muscle, it's not actually being burnt as energy. What happens to it? It gets parked as fat. It's yep. parked as energy overnight. Now, my clients are fasting overnight and they are up and about and they are feeling amazing especially okay. not females, they're, males, they're all females the females are feeling amazing now if you get to what happens and you don't do shift work but if you do night shift and, and all your shift workers are going to be nodding here what happens around four or five o'clock you crave that sweetness right you do yeah. you crave the sweetness what is that that's your body craving energy 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 so it's craving the sweetness and you know we know carbohydrates is just sugar that's all it is yeah so why not eat two yo pro yogurts with some blueberries in it to start off with at 4 a.m when you start to get that craving before you get ah, it oh at before you get it okay at 4 a.m have you now people say what well, you mean like two yogurts yeah is it better that or are you better off having half a dozen tim tams do you know what i mean if you well, have, yeah, yeah. If you have the two Yopro yogurts, now, admittedly, I'm not saying that Tim Tams are bad because Tim Tams are awesome. Let's delicious, let's, yes. <laughs> especially when you're sucking the caffeine through them. At, oh, them so at good. <laughs> but let's be brutally honest. I would rather you have something that's going to keep you feeling full, full. longer. And the blueberries or strawberries or something like that are going to give you that sweetness. They're going to give you the fruit, which is going to stop the oxidization of the protein as well. So you're going to feel really good until you get home. All right. So it kind of crushes that sweet craving that we have because we're getting that through the fruit, yes, but we're right. also being able to stay full because we're not just eating, you know, shitty, right. high sugary Tim yes. Tams or whatever. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you can get so, through overnight, perfect. But if you can't, that's the strategy that you would use. Right. So let's backtrack for a yes. sec. Yep. So just so I'm all around this as well, because I'm learning a lot. Yep. So at around six o'clock, we would have like our breakfast meal. Yep. Our toast then we, eggs. yep. And then we would go to work and around 10 PM, we would have like our dinner meal with a source of protein, a source of fat and a source of carbohydrates. Yes. Then we wouldn't eat a big meal. Yep. And then we wouldn't eat any, if we can, until we get home, if we can do that fast. But if we're struggling around that 4 a.m. mark, when we get that sweet craving. Spot on. Amazing. Spot on. Okay. And we would have a protein, have a protein and a fat. No yep. carbohydrate. But even though blueberries are a carbohydrate, I get that. Yeah. It's a it's a good carb, as you know. You know, fruit is good carbs. Yes. Yeah. Good, good carbs to have. I mean, all carbs are good, but let's be honest. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> a fruit, better off having, you're better off having some blueberries in some Yopro yogurt at that time, which is ideal. Now, the other thing that I do as well for clients as well, particularly our mobile clients, which are, you know, mm -hmm. our police or our fire or our ambulance, our paramedics that are, are stuck at hospitals, sitting there ramped at hospitals and things like that, they can't get back to their base to eat, is to get a wide mouth thermos and to have a hey, wide mouth thermos okay. and have a highly blitzed soup or um, a vegetable soup or something like that. Just something that slips nicely through the system that our body doesn't have to work hard on. To digest, yeah. Yes. Okay. Right? So just... So would you yeah. recommend eating that around that 4 a.m. mark as well or would that be the 10 o'clock meal? That, no, no, that would be your, a, a, in case of emergency break glass. Do you know what I mean? It's oh, yes. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. 
in case of emergency, I'm going to do this, rip the lid off it. But if you're stuck at a hospital, because let's face it, Kate, when we're bored, that's when we get hungry. Yes. It's an emotional response, isn't it? Yes. So I think the best thing for people to do is to have this wide mouth thermos with them and they can sip on it and then they can screw the lid back down and put it back down. They can pick so it up. So that's our safety net. net. It's a safety net. Yeah. Okay. And we can get into the habit of actually having that overnight, but that's a good thing, Kate. It's not yes. bad. It's better than, because we all know, and, and the nurses are nodding and the police are nodding with the donuts and, you know, and I mean, their fireys are fast asleep, so we don't have to worry about the fireys. But <laughs> the ambos and everyone are all running around. Don't worry, it's an in-joke, that one. Um, <laughs> our poor fireys, they do call it. Um, but the, the thing is, we... We, we don't want, we don't want to be eating carbohydrate because it literally, and particularly highly processed carbohydrates because that's yes. going to the system and causing us all sorts of grief. Yeah. Like it is, okay. it's causing us massive problems. So, so fast. fasting overnight for night shifts works wonders. Amazing benefits for females. So if Amazing. you are listening to this podcast right now, that's the one thing that you should take away is maybe – trying out a fast overnight if you're a night shift worker yeah or, or go as, as hard on the fast as you can and yeah whatever you do we don't want restrict and binge do we kate like we don't no. want to, to the restrict so anyone that's listening please i beg you this is so important don't restrict to the stage where you get home and you eat you know half a loaf of bread 14 eggs and chow down a packet of biscuits and all the rest yeah you do not want that to happen right i'll yeah. give you the strategy when you get home you know, but please, whatever you do, it's super important that you don't restrict yourself to the stage where you're ravenous when you get home, because that is a recipe for disaster. Then we're just in another round circle chasing our tail. But I also think as well, it's like when you start anything or you're trying anything new, there's an adaptation process. It takes a while to adapt to change. But if you're sitting at home thinking, you know, I might implement this, take what Roger said, bring that Yopro at that four o'clock time. If you can't make the full fast, you've got that that you can go and snack on to get you through the night. And yeah, that's a really good point. No restrictive eating. We're not living, we're living in the 21st century. We don't give a shit about that stuff anymore. No. We're eating, we're fueling our body 100%. That's right. And we keep the fuel going because, you know, the one thing that we have to stop is, and I've got the analogy on my Instagram, you've seen that. If you don't yeah. have an apple, then you're not hungry. It's an emotional response, you know? Yeah. So if you're hungry, you think, oh, no, I'm hungry. I need that biscuit. I need that biscuit. No, no, I'll have an apple. Oh, I don't feel like an apple. Well, you're not actually hungry. It's an emotional response. That's a response. good one. I really like that. Yeah. It's more of an emotional response. It's an emotional response to eating. It's actually a habit that we form that we go, oh, I'm hungry. Have an apple. Didn't your mum ever say that to you, Kate? Come on. Yeah, she did. But I didn't really think about it in like in That's depth. That's the reason why she did. Have an apple. I don't want an apple. I want a, I want a Tim Tam. No. Oh, geez, yes. I've demonized Tim Tams today, haven't I? I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> anyway, um, we don't demonize Tim Tams. We love Tim Tams, guys. We, we love them. Tams. Tim Tams are good. <laughs> Tim Tams are good. Um, and um, But, yeah, that's why they say, you know, have an apple. If you don't feel like an apple, then you've got a question. Be a bit mindful. Yes. Is it an emotional response? It could very well be an emotional response that we need to address there. That's really, really important, right? So but, when I get home from my night shift, yes. what do I do then? I'm glad you asked. That's this, the next point. I really want to know. This is the highlight. And this is what people, this is what gets people through the fast at night. What I do is I do proats, right? So I just do, I might get 40 or 50 grams of oats. Yep. And I put them in the in the oven, uh, microwave oven, and I nuke those up for about a minute and a half. And then what I do is I put my protein powder into the oats and I stir that through. Now, there's a reason for that. Protein keeps you satiated while you're sleeping the carbohydrate actually helps you to sleep. Now, please, people, carbohydrates are not bad to sleep on at all. See, this is, okay, so this is the thing that I always say to my clients. You can have some sort of carbohydrate before you go to sleep, but everyone almost demonizes carbs in a sense, thinking that it's going to give me all of this energy and I'm going to stay wide awake and I'm not going to be able to sleep. That's right. No, it goes the opposite way. Yes. Also, because we have the protein as well, the tryptophan from the protein, but the the way it acts on the brain, it actually makes us sleepy. Who's ever, yes. like, if you've got American listeners, when they have their turkey meal, or how often after Christmas dinner with all the meat that we have at Christmas lunch, tired on the couch and we go, I just want to go to sleep. <laughs> That's me after every meal ever. I'm like, oh, I'm exhausted. I'm hearing you. So 
the protein actually helps us to sleep. The carbohydrate helps us to sleep. The protein keeps us asleep. Really important, yeah. right? Um, and if you can have a casein protein, because it's a slower burn, especially for your ladies that are wanting to build muscle, because yeah. the idea is to stop the muscle breaking down while we're sleeping. Let me give you a treat. Casein custard. Yes, I love. Casein custard, right? Get home from work. Have that put in the fridge before you go to work. Make it up. Put it in the fridge. Have you ever seen it? It comes out like a vanilla slice. Have you ever done delicious. that? Delicious. Yes, yeah, delicious. I love casein protein or casein, casein custard, sorry. Casein custard. If you put it in a container and put it in the fridge, mix your fruit through it, put some berries in it, chop some strawberries mm. up, put that into it as well. Put that in the fridge. When you get home from work, you got to remember, when you get to 4, 5 a.m., you've got that to look forward to, right? So you'll get home from work. It's already prepared. Open the fridge. Have your casein custard, go to sleep. The casein custard is absolutely fine to have. It mm. will help you to sleep. It will prevent the muscle breakdown. You'll preserve your lean muscle mass. You will stay asleep because you won't wake up hungry. And it's goddamn freaking delicious. And it's delicious, exactly. <laughs> and, it's and you feel like you're cheating, don't you? Like we don't use like yeah. cheating. But honestly, casein custard and also... That's another good one to have even in the evening for your clients in the evening to have that okay. as well. It's amazing to have. Just so awesome. yep. trying the fast yes. when you get home, having something and then going to sleep. Correct. So this is another question that I, so if you guys don't follow us on Instagram, I'm going to do a selfish plug. You should follow us. Mm -hmm. Roger, what's your handle? Um, it's a underscore healthy underscore shift. So you should follow us if you're not <laughs> a little self plug in there, but this is a thing that I got on Instagram. So we asked Instagram a bucket load of questions. And one of the things was how should I structure my sleep around night shift? Like I'm finding that I'm coming home and I'm wide awake or I'm exhausted and I'm not getting proper quality and quantity sleep. Right. So this is a real problem sleep. I've got a question to ask you and I'll also ask, all of your um all of the listeners that are listening to yep. us now and this is the question would you set an alarm to wake up to do what you're not going to bed for now right so if you're sitting up at night watching something on netflix would you set an alarm at 4 a.m in the morning to get up and watch that because if the answer to that is no no what the hell are you doing sitting watching it at night yes sleep is the king of all health journeys right i agree it's number one that you've got to get right it's no good turning around saying oh I, I didn't sleep or i've had a bad night but i'm training the house down and i'm you can't it's a waste no. of time because of it causes we don't recover it causes so many problems so what i do is i have a look at it, when you must prioritize your sleep when you get home from work you can't say, oh, I've just got to put this load of washing on. Oh, I've just got to iron these shirts. Oh, I've just got to do this. Oh, I've just got to do that. No, wait until afterwards. Get home, eat, and after you've eaten, go straight to bed. Do not look at your phone. Don't take your phone. Yes. Do not. Phones are a huge one. And this is the thing that I preach to all of my girls as well. Less screen time. It's a killer. People do not understand. It's not only the blue light. Kate, as you know, it's actually the stimuli of comparing yourself to these. Super you're reactive. Yes. You're in that reactive sense. It's the same thing when you wake up in the morning. If you're a person that rolls over, grabs your phone, all of a sudden you're in this reactive state of stress because you're looking at things. And even if you don't think it triggers you on social media, subconsciously it is. Yes. And then you start your day off in a shit foot because you're already feeling triggered of, over something that you've seen online. That's right. Why can't I look like her? How come I don't? Oh, I want that body. I want this. But you're lying there in bed, not getting on with doing the business that you should. Exactly. Be doing. Exactly. I preach that. So sleep and recovery. Well, sleep is when our recovery happens, but it's the most important thing that is overlooked. Yes. All of the time. Yeah. So going back to your original question. Yes. When should I sleep? Going into your first night of night shift now. Obviously, some people start at like 6 or 7 o'clock at night. Some people start at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Those that are starting, I suggest before you go into your first night or night shift, you get up early on that day, right? Okay. Get up early, suppress that melatonin, get out for a walk, 
and then train on that day. Go and see Kate. Go and get a good workout in. Smash yourself in the gym. Go for a walk afterwards. Walk it out. Go and have a good meal and then have a nap before you go to work. That okay. nap is the key. All right? It yep. is the absolute key. Then when you wake up, that's when you have your caffeine. That's when you have your, um, your hydrolyte to get yourself going. Your big glass of water. And that's when you have your shower. Get yourself organized and go off to work. Take your meal go to work, have your meal at about 11 o'clock at night, your big meal. Don't think yeah. eating at that time of night is bad. This is to get you through until you get home. That's the yeah. goal, all right? So get up, but that nap, anybody that can sleep and get a nap is much better off than that person that gets a shit sleep. My, my plan is um, if you can get up, get up. If, if you wake up and you can't go back to sleep, get up, take yourself for a walk and then Go and have a nap, even if it's 20 minutes or half an hour. And some people will say, oh, but I feel like shit. You know, I feel so awful. You've slept too long. 20 minutes, just a power nap can be enough to get you through overnight. And then you'll start to get into a routine, particularly right. at police and ambos and things like that that do more than the, the one or two nights. Yeah. Um, and all people that do a regular week. Nurses, God bless them. I don't even know how they do it, but you've got to give it your best shot to sleep and you've got to make your sleep your priority. And getting into that routine, really and, sticking to it and getting into it. And Kate, I've, I've started this. Uh, actually, I should have had them ready. I haven't got them ready. But what I'm doing at the moment is I'm actually Thank trialing God. blue light blocking glasses for when I drive home from work. So that ah. while I'm, while I'm, now you, you wear blue, you're wearing blue light blocking glasses. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But I'm talking about the yellow lens ones. You look like an absolute oh, freak. Oh, yeah. It's always good when you look at the bloke next to you at the lights and he's gone. <laughs> 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 because we're now, obviously, we're in the southern hemisphere here now, so it's light early. Mm. What is the point in working in the dark overnight and then jumping in your car and driving into the sun to go home? What do we think is actually happening here? We're suppressing the melatonin. We're keeping the melatonin suppressed. We need that melatonin to come on for our natural sleep cycle. Yeah. We want the melatonin to come. We want it to come. We need it. And by wearing blue light blocking glasses, my last two night shifts that I've done, because I do a full week of night shift, because it's been light in the morning, I've actually been using, and I've got them, and in my profile, if you go into my profile, I've got a link in my link tree to the Swanwick, Swanwick blue light blocking glasses. Mm. Yeah, the yellow lens ones they are brilliant i can't so you've more. noticed that your oh, sleep massive. is a lot better oh massive. wow massive because when i leave work i've already got the blue light well, i wear them for the last hour at work yeah they think i'm a freak but i wear them because <laughs> they are the you know, i look like bono you know out of youtube yeah yellow glasses but but this is the reason why people do this this is why a lot of rock stars are wearing these yellow glasses now they're actually blue light blockers so that mm. they can sleep. Otherwise, they're up all night with the light shining in their eyes and things like that. But if we wear the blue light blocking glasses going home, you leave them on until you put your mask on. Yeah, okay. Your on, take your, turn your lights off in your room. Take your blue light blocking glasses off. Put your mask on. Out like a light. Sleep much better REM sleep. I'm getting much better REM sleep. Yeah. So you have a aura ring, don't you? I do. Yes. I've got so aura. I've never used one. And for anyone that's listening at home, essentially it's a ring that you wear. You wear it 24 seven, don't you? I do. Yes. And it calculates your sleep, heart yes. rate, all yeah. this other data. And it's very, very accurate. So like a Fitbit or an Apple watch is kind of accurate, but kind of not. I feel like the aura ring is like the next level. Uh, the, the technology that's gone into this ring, Kate, is phenomenal. If anybody wants to have a look, once again, go into my bio. I have yeah. a link of, to these products. Um, to the, the um, I, I recommend the, uh, the Manta Sleep Mask. I also recommend the Swanwick Blue Light Blockers and the Aura Ring. I track my sleep. It tracks my heart rate. And what it does is because I track it so closely, it shows you the impact that shift work actually has on yes. your body and your recovery. Yeah. And this is the thing. This is what I always preach to my girls. What isn't measured isn't managed. So if you're not collecting and collating data, there is no way to know whether the things that you're doing and trying to implement are working or getting you in the step towards getting your goals achieved or whatever it is. 
So yeah, getting, I mean, I haven't gotten aura ring, but I've, you've been posting it all over social media and I'm getting, I'm getting influenced. I'm thinking about buying one. I've got a discount code. I've oh, I will, I didn't know. I will use it, but I was literally, you're influencing me to get one because I don't wear my Apple watch when I sleep. And I'm always like, Oh, I probably roughly get eight hours, but I've noticed lately as I'm the end of the year is obviously crazy for everyone. Yes. I feel like my sleep is getting shitter and shitter and I'm feeling more fatigued. Yes. The Very aura ring you don't have to wear during the day. You, yeah. you can actually just leave it on charge overnight. It's not an activity tracker. It's important that people understand. Yes. It. It's not accurate for measuring steps. It's not accurate for, you know, it's not going to measure how your workout is. But can I just say this too, Kate? <laughs> the new ones, the Gen 3 rings, track and predict your cycle for females. They oh. are amazing. And it will predict and it watches for your cycle. So if you've got clients that are trying to fall pregnant and things like that. It watches for the elevation that. rises. It watches for everything. It, the data that this thing spits out is amazing. Now, the first three people, you're obviously going to get reserved one, but the first three people that message me mm. are looking for the code, and please, only people that want and are going to use the code, it's $50 USD off. Oh, that's it's, good. They're still, they're, still, they're still pretty expensive. Mm. You wouldn't even know you're Count wearing it. And, a lot of people with their Apple Watch and things like that now, you have, you have to put them on charge overnight. You can't wear it. Yeah, exactly. And also it's not comfortable to sleep on something heavy on your arm and you're like dead on it dead weight. It's really stylish and you wouldn't even know you're wearing it, Kate. It is light, light, light. Sadly for you, I've just sold mine, um, the, my well, Gen 2, which is a shame. I didn't think it would fit on my fingers. That's I true. saw that you were selling it and I was like, oh, I don't know if it'll fit. Well, the ideal finger to wear it on is the index finger or the middle finger. Okay. I wear it on my ring finger on my right hand, but um, yeah. the ideal, the ideal finger, and because I was wearing it on my ring finger, someone's taken a punt on it, and they'll see, and if it's no good, then I'll let you know, and you can you can certainly try it. And see yeah, what. amazing. But this is the Gen two. The Gen three is um, it's it's another level with predicting like the female cycle. More accurate, like, more high tech. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it also tracks your heart rate during the day, the whole day. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, it takes a reading. Anyway, the aura is. Now, you say, what did you say that if you're not collecting the data, what was your phrase that you yeah, used? So whatever, yeah, so whatever is not, um, what was the saying I said? Whatever is not man, uh, whatever is not measured is not managed. We got yes. there in the end. <laughs> See, I say that which is measured is improved. Yeah, yeah, essentially the same thing. So with my clients, I always preach, like, do your measurements, do your weight do your progress photos because how do we know what changes are happening if we don't have that data? Essentially we're going in blind and it would be the same thing with night shift. If you're not getting enough sleep, how do you know how much recovery you're going to get in terms of working with your coach for your weight loss goals or whatever it is? Okay. And, yeah, and also okay. as well is how many people put so much credence on the, I mean, I talked about this on my stories today. You put so much credence on the numbers on the scale on the ground. Mm -hmm. You're getting so Oh, but my jeans are fitting better. Yeah, that's right. That's because the scales are... are a bullshit. They're, just, they're one spoke in the wheel. Exactly. Measures, measures, photos. Oh. What about when a friend says to you, my God, you look fantastic. Yeah. Are I could... That? <laughs> Roger, we could do a whole other podcast yeah. on why I think the scale weight is absolute trash. Yes. I preach it to my girls. It's a measure of data for me to be able to set your calories. And other than that, I barely ever look at it. Plot twist, I do not give a shit. Do you weigh yourself? Never. I think the last time I weighed myself was probably 2019. I might jump on the scale at the gym every now and then, but it's probably not really accurate because I've eaten or I've trained. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you think Lauren Simpson gets on the scale? No. Do you no. Think she actually gets on the scales? None of these girls get on the scales. They don't even own them. No. They yeah, exactly. Care. They don't even own them. They don't care. So I want to, was there anything else we wanted to touch on or I you want wanted to touch around on? training around shift work as well, if I can. Yes. That was going to be my next question anyway. So you read okay, my mind. Beautiful. Super important. A, a lot of, I watch a lot of shift workers that have worked 12 hour shifts or they've worked overnight, worked eight hours, and then they want to go and do an F45 or a fit stop or, or they want to come and get smashed by Kate at, at six o'clock in the morning on the way yeah. home. No, just no. Your body is stressed already. And in fact, that training is having a negative adaptation. It's not actually having a positive adaptation to you yeah. in any way whatsoever. And if you think about it as well, let's go back to having a look at that sleep. 
that sleep, you are impacting that sleep because you are stimulating your central nervous system, right? Yeah. So go straight home. Have your casing and custard. Have your proats or whatever. Go to bed. Get your sleep. Get up. Go for a walk. Take a break when you're on that few days of night shift. Give your body a rest. To rest. Just deal to process the cortisol, to deal with the insulin resistance, to just take it easy. Give mm. your body a break because when you come out of night shift, you are ready to eat nails, right? Yeah. You're ready to go and train and you will train so much better and then you can really cash in on those adaptations. Yes. Your training. That's what I that's what I always say to my clients is any of my clients that are going through night shift, I always use this phrase control the controllables. Yes. So make sure your nutrition is on point, make sure your sleep and recovery and your water intake is on point. Yes. Control what we can and if we're falling off the bandwagon with training a little bit, because one week of not hitting the gym as hard as you possibly can or hitting the gym at all is not going to fuck up your progression in the long run. At all. At all. Yeah. Now, I had someone come to me the other day and said, oh, I haven't been able to train for four weeks and I've put on so much weight. No, you haven't. <laughs> yeah, you, it's the way you feel. You've only got a, yes. week, a week back in the gym and you'll feel fantastic. But if you've given yourself a break, it's like, oh, how do I track on holidays? You fucking don't. You don't track on holidays. It's a holiday from everything. It's the same as Christmas. Everyone freaks out about Christmas and New Year's. What do I do with my food? Don't fucking track. Put your phone away. Enjoy your time with friends and family. And you'll deal with it when the time's right to get back on track. One or two weeks, like Christmas and New Year's is one or two weeks or a holiday is usually two weeks. Like you're not going to fuck up everything in two weeks. Enjoy life. Are you stepping on stage at the end of the week? No. No. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Let's go to plan B then because you're not <laughs> stepping on stage in two weeks. You know, it's, it's not important. And we've got to look at things as well. What is health? We've got to look at health as our, we're looking at the time with family, the time with friend, although sometimes the time with family is not health, but you know, yeah, um, but especially when uncle John turns up and you haven't seen uncle John for 12 months and he was a pain in the ass last year as well. But and he's also, only getting worse with age. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean though? You value it. Put your phone away eat the pav, but focus, you can still focus on having all the meats. You can still get all the protein in. Yep. Leave the carbs until later, but you can still have a piece of pav and still enjoy yourself. Control the controllables. I use that all the time. Control the controllables with clients. It's my favorite expression. Yeah. It's, Um, it's so important. And that's the thing. It's not going to hinder your growth. So we're getting off track. This is what happens whenever I have a guest on my podcast, we just go crazy. But it's good. It's good. At least we're having good chats. So and next, the other thing I wanted to ask, so we've gone through um, fasting. We've gone through the importance of sleep, the importance yes. of training around night shift. Yes. Caffeine. Uh, caffeine. Very important. Now, caffeine is the nectar of the gods, as we know. We love Amen. caffeine, <laughs> right? We wake up, we have caffeine. As a shift worker, we wake up, we have caffeine, right? We do. And we have that caffeine because caffeine is actually, it's not, well, it's not a stimulant, but it prevents our sleep, you know? So it keeps us going, keeps us going. No caffeine after midnight. Caffeine has got a half-life of four to six hours. So I don't consume any caffeine at all. Now, boys and girls, there's caffeine in sugar-free Cokes, in soft drinks. Yes. There's caffeine in chocolate. There is caffeine in... Um, in, in coffee, obviously. Mm-hmm. There is caffeine in so many things. You have to be super careful of what you're actually ingesting and then turning around and complaining about sleep. Don't say, oh, but I'm so tired. It's it's 4 a.m. in the morning and I'm so tired. I'll have a coffee and, a, and a two Tim Tams. I've, I've used Tim Tams again, but I'm going to have coffee <laughs> and two Tim Tams because you're having caffeine. You're getting mm. caffeine from the chocolate. You're giving yourself glucose, so you're stimulating yourself, and then you're complaining about sleep. Please. Yeah. Let your body naturally get to the stage where you're tired. So have all the caffeines before midnight, but then don't have caffeine. I, I As a safeguard, I say six hours, right? Six yeah. hours at least. Because what people don't understand is in a can of Coke, there's about 40 milligrams of caffeine. That means six hours later, you've still got 20 milligrams of caffeine running through your system. Six hours later, there's still 20 milligrams. 
Now, please, don't be one of these people that says to me, oh, no, I can still go to sleep on caffeine. Yep, you can. I can have an espresso and go to sleep as well, but you don't sleep properly. But it's not quality. No, you're not getting any quality sleep. You're not getting the REM. Oh, yes, I am. No, you're not. Because when you, this is where when you start tracking your sleep properly, you start You'll understand it, yeah. Alcohol, killer on your sleep, as we know, right? Caffeine, killer on your sleep. It causes you so much grief. Mm. People that stop drinking caffeine at 12, at the latest 1 a.m., right, after that, find your sleep will improve out of sight you will feel so much better yeah so much better okay so no caffeine after 12 everybody that's what i say on night shift yeah or if you're on an afternoon shift and you're going to be finishing at 10 or 11 o'clock at night and you're wanting to go to sleep at midnight why would you have caffeine at nine o'clock at night to get yourself stupid yeah it's crazy no caffeine i don't have caffeine after after i don't have caffeine after midday yeah, I'm the same. Right. I'm the same. I smash it in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. I have like two coffees in the morning. After it hits 12 o'clock, yep. I will not have any sort of caffeine. That's chocolate, lollies, yep. anything. Pre-workouts, nothing. No, no. And this is the thing. There's another one too, pre-workouts. That's the only active ingredient in a pre-workout is caffeine. That's what's, yeah. that's what's stimulating you. You're better off having a coffee or an espresso. Oh, I'm the same. I hate pre-workouts. I hate the tingly, yeah, yeah, yeah. The tingy, yeah, heart rate. Yeah, I'd yeah. rather just have a coffee and yeah, be done with done. it. Yep. Okay. Yep. So I kind of want to move into now a couple of questions because we did a question box on both of our Instagram. So if you've got questions, feel free to answer them because you're the man with all the brains in this in this podcast today. Um, so we're going to ask, well, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. I got a lot. Yep. Um. Okay, let me start. Okay, so if you are doing night shift, yes. do you recommend that you should track macros and calories or not worry about it for those couple of days or that week? Not worry about it for those couple of days because you, if, if you're in a bulking phase, you're not going to get up to those calories. Yeah. If you're in a dieting phase, just give your body a rest and just, I mean, don't be a gluttonous pig. Right. Yeah. I didn't use the other word. You knew what I was going. I with. yeah. I know. <laughs> you knew where I was going with that. But anyway, but don't be a gluttonous pig because you won't be able to get the calories in. Give your body a rest. Just have the protein. Have your breakfast. Have that big meal yep. at night, and give your body a rest to sleep. Plenty of water. Let's let's give the body a chance to flush through over those few nights. Yeah. Okay. Done. Um. Wait, there's more. Sorry, I've got to find them. Sorry if you guys can hear. There is a massive blowfly that just came into this room and it's flying around my mic. So apologies if you're hearing this little buzzing sound. It's a bloody fly. Because I can't leave my back door shut because in case my dog needs to go out or otherwise she'll come up here and start crying. Which we want to avoid. Um, Okay, what else was there? We went through how to structure all the meals. Um, Importance of protein we've kind of touched on. Should I carb cycle? No. We've kind of already touched on it anyways. Yeah, but... I would say no. I, I would say no. I, I don't agree with carb cycling fully most of the time. But yep. Um, but I think if we have body stress, let's take as much that you have to think about it out of it. Yep. That's what I would suggest. Perfect. So this is kind of not, this is more a nutrition question. We could both answer it, but I'm asking you. Yes, um, not so much related to night shift, but is it true that, that the body can only absorb 35 grams of protein at a time? And what is the optimum time between meals to consume protein? Body processes all protein consumed over time. So if we, if we're getting our protein and we're doing that and we're eating our protein, then what actually happens is our body will process all of it over time. So yeah. we don't have to say, oh, I can only have 30 grams. No, your body will continue. And the more protein you've got actually in your system, the more satiated and the more full you will feel. So yeah. that's ideal. Yeah, perfect. And the optimal time to consume between is anywhere between three and five hours to catch intervals. That, that muscle protein synthesis to prevent the breakdown. You know, that's yep. what every three to five hours and as much protein as you like. Yeah, perfect. I love that one, that 35 gram, the absorption. Everyone always asks it. Well, because if you Google it, 
I did a quick Google because I, I read that and obviously I know the correct answer, but I did a quick Google because I wanted to see, like, if I was a gem pop person, yep. what would I find? If you Google it, it says you cannot consume between 20 to 30 grams is the most that your body will absorb at a time. Very, very interesting. Um, I'm, there's, there's a lot of questions. We actually got a lot. And this one's a very, we kind of covered that. So I had a very long question. Somebody yes. um, actually kind of covered it, but I'll ask it to you anyway. So yes. one thing that I never know is that I'm starting night shift, say tomorrow, I wake up at a normal time, have breakfast, lunch, dinner, then go for a nap sometime in the afternoon for like an hour or two, then go to night shift where I have another meal at midnight and at 4 a.m. Okay. I would cut the 4 a.m. I would still do the, the breakfast, the lunch. Yep. And then I would probably sleep. So if that client, that person that's inboxed you there, my advice in relation to this would be, to, you're obviously getting up early if you can put three meals in and still get two hours sleep, right? So yep. I would suggest that you get up early. Perfect. Go for your walk. Have your breakfast. I would then go to sort of late afternoon and have a, quite a substantial meal of protein, carbohydrate, and fat. The carbohydrate will help you to sleep in the afternoon to give you that few hours sleep, which is perfect. You're in a yep. perfect, perfect world here to sleep. And then what I would do is I'd get up and just have a, maybe a couple of pieces of toast or something and then go to work. And then when you get to work, that's when I would have the main meal at around about 11 o'clock and then try and fast through. Yep. And yep. then do your probes or your casein custard. When you get home. That routine on night shift. Yeah, that's a... What what she, what that that lady has said to you is a really really perfect scenario. The fact that she can get two hours sleep before she goes in, kudos to her. That's perfect. really good. But I would try probably that's that's a lot of food to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, I would probably have go for the walk, have the breakfast, have a later meal, have that sleep, get up, just have a little snack, just a little snack, and then yep. I'd have that big meal at ten or eleven o'clock to get you through. Give when you we're at time. work, yes. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Um, tips on time management around shift work. Yeah, that's that's I, I, my attitude in relation to now the shift work and there's night shift. And generally, when people say shift work, they talk about night shift. Night shift. Let's let's say night shift. Yeah. Okay. And and generally, when people talk shift work, they are talking the night shift. So I would say, just get through it. Yeah. <laughs> just get through it. So focus on controlling what you can getting your sleep in, getting your food in, yes. making sure you're recovering and resting, moving your body, vitamin D, and not so much worried about, like you said, doing the laundry when you get home, right. catching up with a girlfriend for a coffee once you finish night shift, anything yep. like that, training, nothing. Spot on. I would say do what you can to get through it. The clients that I coach, I generally say to them, we do not, and we've got a golden rule, you don't make a decision on night shift, so don't yeah. make a decision on night shift, all right? So. Don't think about having to mix, you know, when you're putting a load of washing on, you have to think about whites, coloreds, blacks, all the rest of it. You don't want to be thinking. Don't yep. do the washing. It can wait. It's two days or three days. Don't worry about it. Let it go. Just get through. No training. Take that out. But get your walk in. Get your high protein meals in. And please, before you go into night shift, spend a day or two prepping or even a few yeah. hours. It doesn't take hard. It's not hard to cook a massive batch of a turkey chili for argument's sake, which is high protein, it's delicious, and you can actually just scoop it out of a container and put it yeah. in a like thermos or to take as that big meal, you know? It doesn't So happen. get organized yeah. pre-night shift so that your night shift, all you're focusing on is getting up, going to work, surviving it, yep. and then coming out the other end, yes. sleep like well rested and recovered. Yep. And Perfect. if your walk is just around the block, that's a walk. It's important. Moving. Your girls need to move because this is what keeps, you know, that, that digestive tract empty. And the other thing that I suggest that I haven't mentioned as well, Metamucil is very, very oh, yeah. good for females as well. Metamucil, um, and for those that are listening from overseas, I think Metamucil is in Europe but, and Australia, but in America it's more of – it's a psyllium husk. Yeah, a teaspoon, a teaspoon of Metamucil – in your 500 ml of water before you go to work or before you go to bed or something like that, or even both ends, right, so, so to speak, <laughs> it will help you at both ends. It yeah. Will, it's a fibre. If you can get two teaspoons, this is another one for you, Kate, too. If you can get two teaspoons of Metamucil in during the day, 
you've covered nearly 12 grams of fiber in your diet. And you don't even need to really worry about it in terms of dietary. Yeah. So yeah. Yes, so, and not only that, but it will keep you feeling fuller for longer. But because it's useful is a soluble fiber, it absorbs the water, it forms a gel, it goes through your system, it doesn't cause that gas and bloating that women do. Yeah. So it slides through the system really nicely and it will keep you moving. So a teaspoon yep. of Metamucil at the before you go into work or, or don't do that to start off with until you get used to Metamucil yeah. and what it does to you. So that can be a little <laughs> embarrassing, particularly if you're a bit of a home poo person, you know. Yes, <laughs> Def definitely. It's a yeah. thing though. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so Metamucil before yep. work, but let's yep. get used to it first. Yeah, yeah, let's get used yep. to it. You know, like start taking it and start getting that system moving nicely. you got to remember, and what we haven't covered is, even though you're awake and your eyes are looking and your body is moving, your digestive tract is actually sleeping, right? Mm. Because your circadian rhythm actually has it in a rest and digest sleep mode. So we don't stress it. That's why when we try and exercise at that time, we're causing ourselves untold grief, right? Yeah. So we Added stress we don't need. No, we do not want that. Yeah. Awesome. Amazing. I think that wraps up everything. Killed it. That was such a good episode. I learned so much. Like I said, I came into this not knowing about the fast, not knowing how, well, I knew how important um, nutrition was for night shift and I knew it was definitely different, but I've learned so much. So I really hope that all the listeners at home have learned so much. So like I did a selfless plug in the middle of this podcast, I'm going to do it quickly at the end. Make sure you follow Roger on Instagram. So a underscore healthy underscore shift. Correct. I have shared him all over my social media anyways, but if you don't follow both of us, definitely give us some love. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please share it across social media, like, follow. You guys know the drill. And I will see you all in my next episode. Thank you so much for being a part of this one, Roger. It was awesome. Thank you so much, Kat. I really appreciate it. And anybody can message me. I'm more than happy to speak to anybody anytime. He's the night shift guru. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.